Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today's video is about installing Lineage OS for Micro G on a OnePlus 8T. The instructions from Lineage are a little strange compared to flashing other ROMs. I actually even myself had to go through the unbricking tool multiple times and because of how confusing it is, I figured I would make a video now that I've got it down, all the steps are correct because there's not really a good video out there or a good set of instructions, even from Lineage OS themselves. Like these instructions aren't fantastic um, on how to actually properly flash the OnePlus 8T. I really, so why micro G instead of just, hey, just install gaps? Well, so long story short, last year at some point my YouTube channel was hacked. I did actually end up figuring out it was because of the fake OBS. Luckily, they did not actually get in, change my password. I got there very quickly. If you guys remember when my YouTube channel was hacked, I got there very quickly. I wasn't very worried about it. Um, I got them kicked off my channel. I changed my passwords. Everything was fine. So with that though, they had my whole Google account that's been attached to this phone since my first rate, uh, Motorola Droid Razor way back in like 2012 or some crap. Actually, it might have been even before that. So it's almost 20 years of data that Google has collected from me that these hackers had on me. That doesn't sit right with me. I don't want Google following me around anymore. Just like I don't want Facebook listening to me, so I don't use Facebook's actual app. I'm not a crazy, like, oh, the government's following me kind of person. I don't have that mindset. I'm just sick of my data being collected without my permission, even though I do kind of agree to the terms of service. You're kind of forced into it if you want to use one of these devices. So this is why every device I own is rooted. Every device I have has an ad blocker on it. I recommend Adaway with Magisk and Root. And every device I have is possible to unlock and root and put custom ROMs on. Because I'm just sick of the big name corporations collecting data on me basically for free. So let's get right into it. I've talked about it enough. How do you flash a OnePlus 8T? Now first of all, why am I recommending the OnePlus 8T over like a Google Pixel of some kind? So first of all, the OnePlus 8T is a 5G device. For some odd reason, I don't get 5G. I don't know why I should get 5G, but it's a 5G device. Also, what's the cost of the device compared to like a Google Pixel of the same caliber? So let's go OnePlus 8T. We're going to go unlocked. These phones are dummy cheap. Go on Google, get yourself a KB2005. I don't know about the 2007. I haven't seen many ROMs advertised that they work for the KB2007, so I don't actually know what the difference is. This is the exact phone I have right here. This is the KB2005 for 270 bucks. Look, you can even get it for less. 500, that's a little overpriced. Mine is the 12 gig model. So actually, wow, this is a very expensive phone. Maybe I should just sell it. Just kidding. So, there was a Cyberpunk edition for sale. I kind of wanted that one. I still want the McLaren, the OnePlus McLaren phone. But 200 bucks, 300 bucks if you want one that's nearly mint. If you're willing to get one that maybe has some damage and have someone fix it for you, I can do OnePlus repairs, no problem. They're not that difficult. Buy one as a parts phone, you can fix it very easily. Now, equal to this phone would be something like a Google Pixel 6. You're looking at 249, 199, 300 if you want a pro. If you want that same RAM amount, you're looking at like 300. A Pixel or a OnePlus 8T is a fantastic phone. I'm switching from a 6A back to this. Honestly, I would go from my 6A to my Razer phone too as well, but I have charge port issues. I just Personally, I don't like the 6A. I'm going to sell mine. I'm going to put Graphene OS on it and then throw it on eBay. So, 
That's why I would actually go one plus, but you'll want to follow this guide. And this guide kind of works for almost any ROM. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you need to be on Android 13 if you're going to use Lineage OS 20.0. You have to download it from OnePlus by download here. My device is not currently turned on. Um, it's in bootloader mode because I was in the middle of doing this and then I went, this is a good video idea. And if you want to really start from scratch, obviously make sure yours is the KB2005. Go to XDA and get the Unbrick for Android 11 for the KB2005 and flash this in the... Uh, uh, I, fire hose, I think this is called in the fire hose mode. You just run this as admin, click start, turn your phone off, hold volume up, volume down, and plug it into the computer, and it'll immediately start flashing it back to factory setting settings. This is factory like they're flashing it at the factory factory settings. This is not Android recovery factory reset. This is full reset, reinstalls all the partitions, makes it a perfectly clean phone. If you are starting from nothing or you're willing to reset, this is the method I recommend is use the unbrick tool even if your device is not bricked. From there, you want the update like I said. There are actually two files you can get. They there's the OTA and the full payload file. I had to actually Google this. This file works too because you're already on Android 11, so it doesn't matter. You can also just find this file. I don't remember where I found this one, so don't. Mm -hmm. You can go with this one just fine from OnePlus, and it will work all the same because that updates you to Android 13. You basically just put it on your internal storage, go to system update, click the little settings icon for system update, and you can install from local storage. That simple. Once you are actually on Android 13, enable your OEM unlock, enable USB debugging, make sure you have the platform tools. I don't know why this always comes up in Russian. Why? I don't have a Google account that's in Russian. Anyway, you want to have your platform tools, the ADB, the Fastboot, and Android drivers. If you don't have those, I do have a video on that somewhere on my channel. If I can find it, I'll link it. If I can't find it, there's about a million and a half other tutorials on YouTube on how to do it realistically. If you are flashing a ROM for the first time, this is not the phone I recommend. Go get something like a Google Pixel 4a or a Google Pixel 3 XL, something to practice on that you don't care if it breaks. This phone is very easy to brick. And sometimes the unbricking tool does not unbrick. There is such thing as a hard brick, especially during the ROM flashing of a OnePlus 6T. Or OnePlus 8T. Sorry, the 6T is sitting next to me. I have too many phones. So, once you have your platform tools and everything, you have the Android 13 update installed locally. You can also do a wireless update. You don't have to do this step. You can get it wirelessly from system update once you're on Wi-Fi. Honestly, that's probably the easier method for most people. Make sure you have your USB cable plugged in, USB debugging, OEM unlock, both enabled. If you're using the micro G variant, you want to come here and this phone is called the Kebab. Search it up and you'll see they have 18, 19, and 20. I decided to go 20 because 18 and 19 have some issues. The Auto brightness profile on the stock ROM is very aggressive and it seems to actually cause some issues where it literally flashes. You will see it flashing. It'll be like, uh, it'll go from 20% to 60% to 20% to 60%, almost like a strobe light, a very slow strobe light on like Halloween. Don't recommend those two. Lineage OS 20 fixes that from what I've seen. There's also an issue with audio on 18.1 where you doesn't seem like you have control over audio and audio kind of goes up and down. So don't recommend that either. Give me one second here. I'm getting a phone call. I was wondering why my computer was slowing down. I had like over 100 gigs of data in my recycle bin. Holy crap. It's, it's still going up actually as far as I know. Jesus Christ. No wonder my computer feels slow and laggy. Anyway, back to the recording. So I recommend 
the Lineage OS 20 and Lineage OS. This does also apply to regular Lineage OS. If you want Google Apps and you don't want to use Micro G variants, you can go to Lineage's website and actually download official Lineage OS 20 and then install Mind the Gaps or Nick Gaps and just do it that way. I'm sticking with Micro G because I'm sick of being tracked. Uh, well, not tracked, but data collected against my will, basically. So, once you have them downloaded, you are good to get started. Uh, I'm going to sneak you guys a little... Don't worry about that, you didn't see anything. Anyway, I need to go back because I was deleting stuff. So, once you're on Android 13, once you're all good to go, you'll want your platform tools. I have them installed system-wide using the ADB system installer. Run your OTA. Then go back. Now you have your micro G. I don't remember what I was doing here. So the two that are the three that are important are copy partitions, DTBO, and VB metadata. You actually do not need super empty, and you don't need recovery. You need these. You need the Lineage OS recovery, you need the Lineage OS ROM, you need DTBO, and you need copy partitions and VB metadata. Now, what do we do? So, first off, fastboot flashing unlock. So, fastboot flashing unlock. It'll actually tell you on the device, it'll bring up a little prompt with a window, and it'll say some stuff on the screen that you use the volume buttons to navigate and the power button to select. Select unlock phone. Once your device is unlocked, you want to do fastboot, flash, DTBO, copy your DBTO, drag it into the window, and hit enter. That'll flash that. Then you want to do vbmeta.img, vbmeta, flash the vbmeta, then you're good to go. Now, you need to install your custom recovery from Lineage. So fastboot flash recovery. As you can see, I did technically already do this stuff. That's why I didn't hit enter on DTBO and VB metadata. This phone is so easy to brick with custom ROMs. I didn't want to risk it. So I'm not hitting enter unless I have to. You do your custom recovery, hit enter. And then once that is all done, you can reboot to your custom recovery. So fast boot, reboot, recovery. It faded out like it's going to brick. I'm worried. Okay, it didn't brick. I was worried. Oh my god. So if you see the screen fade out like a CRT monitor, you might have a brick. Might. I didn't brick this time. The last three times I attempted this, I bricked. Luckily, these kind of bricks can be undone, so it's called a soft brick, and you just use the unbricking tool, start over from the beginning, I honestly can't tell you why it happens. I don't know. But now that you are actually in Android Recovery, you can go in. You want to do a factory reset right now. So hit factory reset, factory uh, format data, and factory partition. You're good to go. Then you want to go to advance, and you want to reboot to recovery again, just to make sure it's a clean recovery. Then you want to go ADB sideload, copy partitions. I'm not hitting enter on this because I already did it, but you want to do apply update on the phone, apply from ADB, and hit enter. This takes about 60 seconds. I don't know the point of copy partitions, and it's actually a very weird thing to find, but I actually managed to find it just by Google searching copy partitions lineage OS one plus eight T, and you'll actually find it uh, copy. Uh, yeah, this. So I searched basically that. I'll put this in the description because it's easier than me updating it. Um, or actually, what I'll do is I'll grab this and put it in the um, what should I call it? Don't freaking shut up. So I'll grab this link and hopefully remember to put it in the description. No promises. I forget things very quickly and easily. But you basically need that zip file, you ADB sideload that, then you're good to go. Then you want to reboot recovery again. You always want to reboot recovery, and the reason for this is 
I don't know. This phone is finicky, okay? It's easy to brick. And it, it bricked on me when I didn't the first time. So every time you flash a zip, reboot recovery. <laughs> so once you've done that, you reboot your recovery and do the actual ROM and hit enter. Once you flash your ROM, it's all good to go. You want to reboot your system and actually hope that it boots into Android. So I'm going to boot mine right now. I already flashed the ROM. It's fine. If you want to root your device, you are going to need Magisk. So, Magisk releases. You want 25.2. I'm going to download it again, even though I don't need to. Mine is booting, thankfully. I'm just going to put this here. So, you actually need to go through the Android system setup real quick. You can... Uh, you don't have to connect to Wi-Fi, just set like your date and time. For me it's Eastern. Is that the right date? It is not the right date. Phone, what is wrong? And it's definitely not three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh my God, I am awake way too early today. 7.35, dang it, jeez. SIM card is missing. I know, I took it out because it was broken. Anyway. I always turn off the location services. I always turn off helping lineage OS. I always do three button navigation because I'm a freak. Skip my fingerprint. Skip protecting my phone. Can I just say that Oxygen OS Android 13 just basically looks like Oppo OS? Like it's ugly. It's really ugly. It looks like any Xiaomi phone you ever see. It's terrible. I hate it. Anyway, I don't need maximum brightness. Why are you on maximum brightness? Now that I'm actually inside the phone, I'm able to go to settings, enable USB debugging if it didn't stay enabled already through this reset process. Sometimes it does. So if you leave your phone plugged in through the reset process and go through uh, the first time it boots, it will actually be like, hey, do you want USB debugging? And I always click yes. Get my locations off. Cool. So. I'm all booted into Lineage OS. I'm making sure I still have an IMEI because this thing is freaking terrible. I do, thank God. I have two IMEIs. It's so weird because I only have a single SIM slot. Anyway, now you want to reboot if you want your Magisk. So, uh, I need a different window because I'm not willing to retype that. ADB reboot recovery. This is also the point that if you wanted to um, install gaps, you want to reboot recovery before going through the setup, install your gaps, and then reboot into the system. I skip that because I'm using the micro G variant. So I'm going to go apply update, apply from ADB. I'm going to flash Magisk. Yes, you can just do straight up the APK. It's the same as doing the old zip file. It's combined, and it works. The other thing you are going to need is a couple... Um, a couple things for like bypassing safety net. You need the safety net fix from K Dragon, which on the latest version here, twenty two point four. This is so you bypass safety net and things like your banking apps will work. There are some apps that it's just impossible. Even Magisk Hide and the Zygote system will not hide root from certain apps. I'm going to reboot system real quick. And then we're going to put this on my internal storage. And we're also going to go through my setup because I just want to have my phone completely set up. I'm finally switching back to this phone. It was broken for a day because I incorrectly updated this and turned it into a brick. Uh, I think it's under phone specific. As you can hear, it's on. Uh, setup. There we go. So, yes, my APKs are outdated. They will all update themselves. It's fine. So, ADB push. I'm just doing it this way because it's easier. SD card. Now, the one thing is, when you install Magisk via custom recovery, you do have to be on Wi-Fi the first time you open it or have your SIM card in the phone so you have cellular data. Don't freak out also if when you first put 
the SIM card in the device after flashing this ROM, you don't have mobile data. It's because it's disabled in settings. You have to go into settings, select uh, network settings, go into your SIM settings and enable um, cellular data. I'm on Wi-Fi now. You want to tap the Magisk icon and actually let it download the full Magisk Manager and install the APK for Magisk Manager. Once that is installed, you do want to allow uh, notifications for Magisk just for when there's updates and stuff. It doesn't hammer you with them like other apps do. There is a required additional setup step where you have to reboot the phone again. But I'm going to reboot my uh, Android device real quick because I just put Magisk on it. Once that's done, I can go back into Magisk, enable um, systemless host, and install the safety net, and enable uh, the new version of Magisk Hide. So let me make sure I still have the screen mirroring software so I can actually show you guys what's going on on my screen. There we go. I kind of forgot that I had this on my phone at all, or on my computer at all. So as you can see, Magisk is installed, Wi-Fi is connected. This is the Micro G variant. It comes with F-Droid. I prefer Aurora Store because it will actually search Google Play, which I'll show you how to install in a moment. We're going to go Magisk. As you can see, all up to date. Everything is good. Go Settings. Want to do DNS? Or Actually, no. I'd like to disable that. Sorry. Um, you can hide the Magisk app if you want. You want to do Systemless Hosts. I'm going to do Zygist and Enforce Deny List. And from there, it's pretty much fine. You can go back. You want to do your modules. Go to your internal storage. Here's my safety net fix. I'm going to apply that. I'm going to reboot again, which means it disconnects here. I'll run this again here in a second once it reboots. I just want to show you guys the entire process, basically. But now you'll bypass Safety Net. You can use Magisk Hide, and most stuff will bypass. Um, the only things that haven't bypassed for me are, strangely, uh, the apps I need for work uh, from Best Buy, of all places, and um, a few other, like, some crazy banking apps. I Shut up. You're literally in the middle position. So here we go. Run it again. Now here we are. We have uh, Magisk Hide and everything enabled. Let's get Aurora Store. So you do want to enable updates just in case there's any updates that you have to download through F-Droid for the system, like Micro-G updates. Those generally won't come from Aurora Store. They'll only come from this. So there is actually an update for F-Droid. I'm going to update this. Is it going to let me? Oh, it's already downloading. I thought it wasn't. Huh, my bad. And it just installs by itself because it's a system app. So now we want to go in. I want to do Aurora Store. There it is. Oh. Yeah, there's some things that people don't like about it. But Aurora Store is actually fairly fantastic. So this will actually still search the Google Play Store, which is really nice. That's why I like it, because there's some things you won't find on F-Droid, because F-Droid kind of handpicks stuff, or I think people submit to it. I don't know how it entirely works. But Aurora Store is much nicer. Let's set up Aurora Store. So I want to go in. I like allowing the root installer. root installer. Give me the pop-up. Thank you. I just let it install by root. It's easier. You can also do um, app manager, Aurora service. I like doing the root installer. It's just easiest. Oops. I like choosing pitch black because it's perfect for AMOLED displays. I like the color purple. Shut up. And then you need to grant it a couple permissions. And then you go finish. I like to anonymously search. 
I don't like applying my Google account to it just because I don't need to, because like I said, this is my attempt at getting away from Google. So it'll connect. The first time takes a second, but after this, it's usually fine. Do, 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 do. I might get copyright for that, actually. Ah, we're back in. Okay, so as you can see, this searches Google Play just like everything else. But realistically, all your stuff is here. Personally, I install... Oh, I don't know why it... Oh, I must have accidentally double-clicked. Yes. Must have accidentally double-clicked. It happens. I think if you double-tap on the screen, it like closes the app or something. I don't know what happened. But it's 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 trying. It's trying its best. Sometimes. I actually looked at Spoof Manager. I should dig through this a little bit. There it goes. So I like to install Firefox because it doesn't require any Google services at all for um, web browsing. Kiwi requires Google services. Dolphin requires Google services. Um, Dolphin the web browser, not Dolphin the game emulator. Uh, obviously Google Chrome requires Google services. That's why I don't use those. The other thing I am going to obviously install is the platform where this video is being watched. And I'll actually show you guys how to get revanced as well because YouTube Vanced is dead. YouTube will work on a micro G ROM. It will not work sometimes on things like graphene, divest, or calyx. I think on graphene, if you set up a sandboxed user and install the Google Play services and all that through that sandboxed user, it'll work. So we're going to close that. We're going to close that. We're going to close that. I'm actually going to get revanced right on the phone. Oh, actually, I want to install my ad blocker first because holy shit, we're going to get hit with ads. So, like I said, I like to use Addaway. So, ADB install Addaway. And once that is installed, I'll show you setting up Addaway. It's very simple. I like to allow notifications just so I know when there's updates. You want to do root based blocking. Grant it. Go next. It's going to sync everything. I got to sneeze. That was a big boy sneeze. Anyway, next. Finish. And... I guess this version's the most up-to-date. I didn't download it that long ago, so it makes sense. So we're good to go on that. I do have a couple others I like to install. So ADB install my modified Spotify that's AMOLED modded. I don't remember what QTAC is. ADB install. This is for Lucky Patcher. I know, not the most secure app, but it does also work very well. Weird. Doesn't like it. We're going to do LP. Oh, did my antivirus delete it again? No, it didn't. Last time it deleted it. My antivirus is deleting Lucky Patcher. I'll download it on the phone. So anyway, we're going to do revanced. We're going to open up Firefox because, like I said, it's the one I like. And we're going to go... I don't allow stuff from here. I just Google it, honestly. I know I'm trying to get away from Google and that I can't spell. No, revanced. There we go. Uh, I think it's revanced.io, but I don't want to search the wrong thing. Give me one second to find it again. 
All right, I was right, revanced. Now you wanna do it by Magisk module. I don't do it by APK, I do it by the Magisk module because obviously we're rooted. There's no point in using the non-root version. You wanna download the zip and you wanna download the min detach module. You need to download both. So also when you are allowing stuff, it'll just, you can just slide them away. Oh, that's fine. So revanced and all that are downloaded. We can go in, go to Magisk, and we can patch our YouTube. So you want to do the revanced module first, and then you can go back and do find detach. And the other thing I like to download on all my Qualcomm devices is a thing that allows you to speed up your internet a little bit with, actually, can this type? Can I type through? Oh, I can. I didn't know that. Um, good Lord. Qualcomm disk. Wi-Fi bonding, that's what it was. Oh, this is read-only now? Why? Well, it still works, so I guess it doesn't matter. Still gonna look at releases. So I like to use this Wi-Fi bonding because it does seem to make your Wi-Fi a little bit faster. If you are on a Qualcomm device, do not use this. If you are not on a Wi-Fi or a Qualcomm device, it does not work. Oh, that must be the wrong one. Oops, one sec. I figured it out, comma, it took me a while, but wow, I do voice to text so often, I just said the word comma for my sentence. Anyway, I figured it out. It's because I'm on Lineage 20, that only works on Android 11 and older, so. Don't listen to me about the Wi-Fi module thingy. It doesn't work on 13. So anyway, this is pretty much my setup for a phone. I will be putting my Google account into MicroG, which spoofs everything to Google. Uh, if you need a Google Maps app, you can use Google Maps. There are better ones on F-Droid, actually, that I really like. F-Droid. Uh, search. I need to remember the one I was using because I really liked it. It was not this one. I'll have to remember which one I was using because it was actually really cool, really nice. I really liked it. It wasn't this one either. I'll figure it out eventually. It was a great Maps app. I wish this thing hadn't crashed because it was fantastic. Oh well. I'll talk to you guys later. This is good enough. I've recorded enough today. This is a 35-minute video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.